In this maintenance video, I am going to show you two simple processes of how to reapply wax to your chain. Not only helping your cycling be a little bit easier, but it's also going to help improve the longevity and life of your chain, helping it last much, much longer before it needs replacing. This is going to help save you cash to spend on other upgrades for your bike, or just do what I do and buy extra cake at the cafe. If you're running a wax chain on your bike, gradually, after say 300 to 500 kilometers, the wax is going to start to wear off. But thankfully, the process of reapplying the wax onto your chain is much, much easier than the initial application, an incredibly meticulous cleaning process. Now, if you're going to use the hot melt wax method to rework your chain, you are going to need to remove the chain from your bike. Thankfully, that's a pretty simple process to do. And we also have maintenance tasks such as that, as well as many others, in the Essential Road Bike Maintenance book, which is available at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. <laughs> There is also, of course, a much, much simpler way of re-waxing your chain, and that's to simply use a drip-on wax method, which we're going to cover as well, because that's much faster, but doesn't quite yield the same performance and longevity between applications. So, step one, if you're using a hot melt wax method, you're going to need to use a wax heater. Fill it up with wax, turn it on, and set it to around 65 to 70 degrees Celsius. This wax heater that I've got costs £10 on Amazon and has a little thermostat on it to allow to control the temperature, which is what you want. Oh, and the wax I'm using is actually recycled. I've already heated it up from the pellet form in the bag, but there's no harm in doing that. Just reuse what you've got. Step two, thoroughly wipe your chain while pedaling backwards with a microfiber cloth. So at this point, you have two options. Option one, apply your drip on wax lubricant, such as this. You can apply one big drop per roller work your way all the way around the chain and then pedal backwards to get the lube into all of the links and the rollers. And then you need to leave it for at least four hours for the wax to dry properly before you ride. And then you're ready to go until that wax wears off and you can just redo the same process. Or you have the second option. which is step three, where you remove the chain from your bike for the hot wax method. Now, if you have a quick link such as this, it's actually pretty easy to remove your chain using something such as these, which are the Park Tools MLP 1.2. Or if you haven't got a quick link, you can just use a chain tool like this to drive out the joining pin. And then when you come to put the chain back together, you can just refit a quick link and life is really easy. But do note, some quick links are designed to be single use. But in my experience, you should be able to get somewhere in the region of three to five uses before they come a little bit loose and will then start to need replace it. But proceed with caution. Step four, once the wax heater has got up to temperature, which this one has because I planned ahead earlier, um, you need to just simply lift the lid off, check that it's nice and runny inside, which looks good to go to me, and then lower your chain into the hot wax. And as you're doing this, you want to make sure all of the chain is submerged in. But do be careful, the wax is hot. With the chain inside the wax heater, you're going to want to leave that for around five minutes. The reason you're doing that is to allow the chain to get up to the temperature of the wax and allow the wax to start to work its way into all the little links and the little gaps. Give it five minutes, we can then also take an old screwdriver, such as this, or quite frankly, anything you're prepared to get a little bit of wax onto, and then move the chain and agitate it around a little bit. Step five, having left the chain in there to sit for a bit, I can flick the wax heater off and then it's a case of leaving it a few minutes, 
for that film to form onto the top. Now, if I take the lid off, it's going to allow it to cool down super fast. And then I can get a small pick, such as this, or your screwdriver, and then hook the chain out once that skin has formed on the top. I just stir it around and then hook it out. And then at that stage, I can hang it up on the wall and leave it for a few minutes for the chain to cool. Being mindful not to burn your hands because the wax is hot. And if you haven't planned ahead and got somewhere to hang your chain, well, you can just stand there and hold it for five minutes, wishing you had planned ahead. But hey, there's always next time. Once the chain has cooled, it's gonna be stiff as a board and you're gonna need to manually manipulate all of the different links to free it all off. And this can be a bit of a messy process, hence why we've come outside to not make any mess in the garage. It's just a case of carefully going through in your hands and bending all of the individual links just to free them off. Now, as you do this, some of the external bits of wax is gradually gonna flake off. So, work our way all the way around the chain. And then at this point, once you've freed it all off, we can head back inside and you've got a freshly waxed chain which is ready to fit onto your bike. But also do be mindful, there is still gonna be more wax to flake off and you need to take a little bit of time to bed this chain in, which will normally take 10 minutes or so. When it comes to refitting the chain on your bike, you need to be mindful because some chains are directional. Now, a simple rule of thumb to tell if it's directional is whether it has writing on the outer links on both sides or just one side. Now, a simple rule of thumb is literally to have the outer links with the text on facing towards the outside of the bike as you install it on. Also, the quick links which I've used, I have cleaned with a microfiber cloth. And you can see the ends of the chain here are full of wax, so it's just a case of pushing the quick link through, and it might be a little bit stiff to get the links to join together. If that's the case, you can just squeeze them together gently with a pair of pliers. And if you had a normal joining pin, having your chain together in the first instance, you can use the chain tool to remove one of the ends of outer links, and then that means you can reinstall a quick link ready to go. Right, let's get on. At this point, you've got a freshly waxed chain ready to go for another few hundred kilometers of silky smooth riding. But do remember, it is gonna take around 15 minutes worth of riding to bed the chain in and get the gears to all work nicely. At this point, the wax is gonna start to flake off on the outside and even just with a few minutes of pedaling, make a bit of a mess on my floor. And also, interestingly, I have noticed that 12 speed chains seem to take a little bit longer to bed in and get to their peak performance a little bit longer than what we have with 11 speed chains. And I'm gonna say now, personally, I'm starting to use the hot wax method less and less recently because I'm finding by using the drip on wax, you can get pretty close to the same performance with a lot less hassle. But it has to be said, if you do want to have the best in terms of performance, longevity between applications, and a reduction in overall drivetrain wear, then hot wax does seem to be at the top of the list. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this maintenance video and found it particularly helpful. If you have, let me know in the comments section down below. And also, if you've got any questions about waxing your chain, get us in the comments section. Um, but do remember, waxing your chain isn't for everybody, and that is one of the freedoms that's afforded to you. Right, I'm out of here. See you later. That's such an Ollie line.